This is the Volkswagen ID Buzz. And it gets its name from the word buzz when you hear electric buzzing, because this is Volkswagen's all electric minivan, MPV, again, whichever way you want to call it. Um, it's currently designed as a five seater passenger car, or you can get it as a van or, you know, a cargo transporter, if you like. Um, it's got a lot of living up to do because it's a very nostalgic car, this. You probably recognize the looks, which hark back to the 50s and 60s version of this car, the VW camper van back in the day, hugely popular. So as I say, very nostalgic and a lot to live up to. There's a reputation involved in this as well. Um, so the car was launched back in 2017. I say launched, it was unveiled in 2017, but never actually made it to the production line until 2022. So it's a very, very new model to the all electric Volkswagen range. It joins the ID3 and the ID4 as well. So the ID Buzz, let's get around it, let's have a look at it. Let's give you our opinion. Let's take it out on a road test and see what we think of Volkswagen's latest all electric minivan offering. You're watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. And if you've never watched us before, then please watch the next minute and a half trailer and see what you think of what we actually do, because we don't just do car reviews. No, you'll find out in the next minute and a half. And straight after that, come back to us, and then we'll crack on with the review of the Volkswagen ID Buzz. This is how a car should sound. Listen to this. ID buzzes come in two different trim levels. You've got your Buzz Life and you've got the Buzz Style. Cars start at around 59,000 UK pounds. So this isn't a cheap electric car to buy. You will also have a choice of seven different paint colors. Again though, you're gonna be paying from 1,035 UK pounds extra for one of those colors as well. And if you want the two-tone paintwork like I've got here, there are four different choices available, but you're talking from 2,790 pounds for these color combinations. Inside, you've got nine different variations on your interior as well. But again, you'd be paying from 1,035 pounds for those color combinations. Buzzes come with 19 inch alloys as standard. If you wanna upgrade those to 20 inch, which I think is well worth it, you will be paying an extra 540 pounds. So what do you get as standard with your VW ID Buzz? Well, straight up, everything you can see here. You get keyless entry and keyless ignition. Well, it's not really ignition. There is a big stop-start button on here because an ignition would mean you were starting an engine, but it just has a stop-start button there. But it's like driving a normal car. You put your foot on the brake and you push the button and everything will fire into life here. You've got this lovely 10-inch TFT touchscreen here. It's really nice, very VW. The only thing I will say about it is at night, the buttons that you've got here for changing the volume on your um, tunes and stuff and your heating controls aren't lit up so you have to memorize where they are and that can be a little bit annoying however the screen itself really easy to use if you go into the air climate control straight away it's just all push button it's just really really nice and simple I like that keeping the aircon off at the moment keep as much of that battery in as possible so that 10 inch TFT touchscreen is basically the center of your entire hub here you do get another little digital cluster over here which 
will give you a readout. So once you've actually pushed the button and it fires up, it will come up. You've got your speedo. There's a couple of different views. You can change the view here. Um, they're haptic buttons here, so you can actually slide across like that and it will change. Or you can physically push down on there like that. Um, the cars come with Android mirroring, Apple Play, wireless Apple Play as well, which is really nice. If you need to charge your Apple device while you're driving along, there is a little pouch in here with an Apple charger in there. However, you can also plug a USB in there as well. USB C's everywhere in this car, um, so you might need the adapter like I've got here for the time being, but in the future we'll all have USB C's. You'll find them in the doors, they're in the back for the passengers. Absolutely amazing. Another thing I really like, watch this, um, your cup holders are hidden away in here. So you just pull that down like that and you've got a double cup holder. How nice is that? And then when you don't have your cups there, just pop it away. That is really nice design. I love it. Very flat, straight through there. There's no transmission on this car. So, you know, you don't need any big humps in the middle of it. It just gives, it's just oodles of space in here, places to put stuff. You've got a really nice uh, sort of glove box there with all your bits in. I love the finish on this as well. You know, we mentioned that there are nine different finishes when it comes to colours and setups in this car as well, which is beautiful. Um, you get heated front seats. Um, you also get a heated steering wheel as well, which is really nice. Um, I love the steering wheel on this, especially this white as well. It's really lovely the way it all sort of sets off against the, the green. I wouldn't have chosen green if it was me, but it just kind of works, doesn't it? I love these armrests as well. You can set these up. You've got this massive sort of panel thing in the middle here where you can put bits and pieces. You can actually lift this out as well. So if you don't want it in here, you can maneuver it out. Um, your aircon, as I say, it, it works off a touchscreen over here. You can set that up quite easy, but you just got to remember at night when it's dark exactly where it is in the same with your audio uh, the car does come if you put it into reverse um, it comes there we go it makes a noise uh, you've got the reverse camera and you've got reverse and forward beepers as well again it's a big vehicle you need that when you're parking this you really do i'll put it back into neutral again it'll disappear but you can see lots of little noises which i really like as well and it's got some really funky bits and pieces you get cruise control as standard you've got distance control you've got lane keep tire pressure monitor vi uh, sign recognition on this as well and it, it all works really well in here um you've got to jump up to the next level to the uh, the style that's the, the kind of top of the range version of this car to get the blind spot mirrors and bits and pieces like that but you do get park assist as well as standard so lots of stuff for standard um and i'm really just i just love sitting here as well the the actual comfort of the seat it's, it all works doesn't it guys it's really cool Around at the back of the buzz, I think the nostalgia just continues. But at the same time, you've got that sort of modern feel to it. So with the nostalgia bit, you've got that big VW badge on the back there, really showing off the heritage of this car. But then you've got that modern touch with the LED clusters either side. You've got this big aero over the top, help, helping that drag coefficient on this on this vehicle because you need that when you're in a battery vehicle. You need that, that range and it's all going to be affected by the drag drag on this car. Uh, you've got the brake light built in up there, you've got a wash wipe, you've got the privacy glass all the way around. I'm loving the two-tone guys, loving it. It's just so nice. You know, I mentioned when, when you know, it's, it's just little bits and pieces, I think, that actually make this car, that sets it apart from, from other vehicles that are out on the road. It's just got a uniqueness to it that I really love. No fake vents anywhere. It's an electric car at the end of the day. There's no point in putting any fake vents in. Um, it does get an, an assisted electric tail lift. I'm going to step out of the way because this, guys, is absolutely mahoosif. Check it out. It's beautiful though, because when it's raining, you can step under here, it's perfect for loading. Look at the load height as well. I mean, it's literally, you know, it's below my knee. I can't believe that. It's actually below the knee. So lifting anything up, even from anything from shopping bags to suitcases, when it comes to suitcases, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Check out, you've got an LED cluster either side up there that literally lights up this whole area when you're loading at night. It's perfect. You get the obligatory parcel shelf. It is a nice one. It's a roll up one and it goes back quite easily. It does come out very easy. I'll show you in a second. But do we really need that, especially in a vehicle like this? It's just going to get in the way. If you're going to throw in bikes in here or you're going to have dogs jumping in and out of here or, you know, whatever you're loading in here, you don't need a parcel shelf. Let's face it, there's nothing to be hidden in here, seriously. And you've got the privacy glass all the way around as well. Anyway, anyway, that's my moaning. Now, I said space in here. 
1,121 litres. In layman's terms, that's 16 one six carry-on suitcases. 16! This vehicle, this particular car that we've got on test, gets this split level floor, really nice. It's got a, a lovely, you know, it's a hard floor. You can get everything in it, including a double air mattress, because that's how big this is. You can slide a double air mattress in there. It's beautiful for keeping everything underneath here. VW supply you with this beautiful box and you've got your charging cables in there and everything. It's, it's just so neat the way it's all been put away. I said I'd show you how easy the parcel shelf comes out. Let's pop that out like that. One handed guys, look at that. It doesn't weigh hard hardly anything and you can slide it under here and you put it over to sort of one angle like that on its side you can get your cables in there as well it's absolutely brilliant look at that how lovely is that 12 volt adapter over here check it out so you can pump up your bike tires or your kayaks or whatever you've got out the road get your dogs in here throw your stuff underneath it, it really is the perfect sort of weekend family car for getting out and about. You've got a 60-40 split on the seat over there. You can whack them down, double up your size on the back here, and then get that air mattress in here. Get down to the south coast, enjoy your weekend. Even if you're not into your surfing or doing stuff like that, it's just an ideal practical family car. And I love the fact that you can just throw everything in the back here and head off. Beautiful, nice one, VW. You've really nailed it with this. One of the things that I absolutely love about the ID Buzz is the sliding doors. How nice is that? So easy, it locks back there as well. Look at the size of that doorway. It's just simple to get in and out of this car. And trust me, you are gonna get at least three adults across there. It is so wide, this car. So you've got this lovely entrance. There's a step here. It's got a rubber piece on there in case it's wet. You know, you don't wanna be slipping. Got a grab handle here. You can just pull yourself straight in like that. Seats are superbly comfortable, really nice. It gets better, guys. Watch this, there's a handle down here. If you pull this, look, it actually goes right back. You can, you could almost have a sleep here. Look at that, that's so nice. I mean, when it comes to comfort, this car really nails it. Um, let's have a look at the back of the seat. I'm just gonna get this in a nice position so I can sit and describe what you've got here. So on the top here, you've got a little pouch that you can put your, you know what, I'm gonna show you this with the door shut because it's so easy. Look at that. How easy is that? <laughs> ah, before I tell you about the pouch, um, windows don't go down in the back. So if you're a little bit iffy about that, bear that in mind. I don't think there's, well, I'm sure it is possible to, to make a window go down there, but obviously for safety reasons, they, they can't. They are, they do have the privacy glass on them and they're very big. So if you do suffer from car sickness, I don't think it's gonna matter that much. It's just a bit claustrophobic. That's the only thing if you do, you know, have that issue, but they're quite low, they're big and they do have the privacy glass on them. So yeah, I could get used to it. It's all right, it's not bad at all. Let's get back to our little pouch. We've got a little pouch here where you can put your mobile phone. I think that's really nice. You just pop that in there. Don't forget charging. They've got all the charging ports are in the doors. So there's no, you know, no mess all around here. Just have your charging cable here and you can have it on your lap. Or even better still, you get airline style trays in here. Look at that. You can pop that up, put your drink in there. You can have your little iPad on here or whatever you want. Oh, it's just so nice. Little little handle, push it back in like that. Uh, little pouch down below, maybe to keep your iPad in there or something. A foot rest on the back of the seat there. So you can get your feet up like that. Get that seat down. Look at that. Get a movie going. I'm going to put that back up just to show you. You can just sit back and just let someone drive you four or five hours down to the south coast or somewhere, do your surfing for the weekend. It's absolutely brilliant. So versatile, this car. Love it. Um, in the centre section here, as I said, you easily get uh, three adults across here. You've got recessed seat belts on here as well. Real nice finish as well. Um, you know, that's the one thing I have noticed, the quality finish on this car. Quality of the carpets, quality of the workmanship on the actual stitching and stuff like that. It's, it's absolutely superb. You've got isofix points either side. So that's really nice as well. You're gonna get your kiddie seats in here, no problem at all. But just look at the height in here, look at the space. Um, and there is obviously no transmission tunnel because being an all electric car, you don't need a gearbox. So there's no, you know, it's just lovely. You can maneuver across, you can slide backwards and forwards, um, or you can just simply lie out like this and enjoy this car for what it is, which is basically a massive people carrier with bags of street cred. I mean, it doesn't get much better, does it? So when it comes to motor and battery configurations with the ID Buzz, there's only one current option available. It comes with a single motor which is attached to the rear wheel, so it powers rear wheel drive only. It's 150 kilowatt. 
In old money, combustion term, that's around 200 brake horsepower. But you have to remember, this car was not built for speed and acceleration. It's gonna give you naught to 60 times of just under 10 seconds and a top speed of around about 95 to 100 miles an hour. So don't expect too much out of this car when it comes to that. There are plans to produce a long wheelbase version of this car with all wheel drive, that's two motors. But primarily that's gonna be for the American market. I do hope we have that option over here because I like the idea of the long wheelbase. Gives you an extra two seats as well. So that's a seven seater that's gonna be available. But do bear in mind when you've got two motors, that's gonna draw down the battery a lot. And I think they might need to think about giving it a bigger battery. Currently it gets a 77 kilowatt battery, which isn't too bad. Range on that VW say is around 255 miles. Real world range, in my opinion, during the summer, maybe 230 miles. During the winter, potentially 155 to 160 miles. Charging times, well, you can charge up to 175 kilowatts, which isn't bad, but you've got to find a unit that will do that. The most I've found around where you know we've been testing the car is 150 kilowatts. And it doesn't always give you 150 kilowatts because it depends on the time of day, who else is charging and other different you know, variables. At the moment, we're getting around 70 to 80 kilowatts an hour. So it's not quite the 150 that it's offering. And don't forget when you're out on the road, it's quite expensive. You are talking 84 pence per kilowatt. So that can get very, very expensive. It takes around 20 to 30 minutes to give you a full charge from 10 to about 90 percent which isn't bad at the end of the day but like i say that will fluctuate according to who else is on that unit and the time of day um, if you're going to really have one of these cars you do need to invest in a home charger an 11 kilowatt home charger is absolutely ideal you take it out during the day you go back home you get yourself a dual tariff with your supplier your energy supplier so as of midnight this car starts charging until seven in the morning takes around seven hours and that can cost you as little as 14 pence per unit that's a big difference to the 84 you're paying out on the road so you do need to bear that in mind so around seven hours to give you an overnight charge but all in all i think currently the id buzz is well set up for a bit of cruising when you get out on the road in the vw id buzz it really does give you a buzz i'm sure they should have named it after the feeling you get from driving around in this car because it's just got you can see people on the side of the street they actually stop and look and go wow it looks amazing or they're probably looking going what the hell was that <laughs> but it is a really lovely car to drive i was expecting it to be very big very wallowy uh, very sort of bouncy down the road but it's got a really good solid feel about it even when you hit a pothole or you've got like a big bump in the road it seems to absorb everything um, you've got four different driving modes on here. You've got the driving modes are accessed here. So you just push the button and they'll come up. You've got the Eco, then you've got Comfort, you've got Sport, and then you've got an individual mode where you can actually make a mix of those three together and turn it into your mode, so to speak. So if there isn't a lot of difference, I must admit, between the Eco and the Sport. It's just a little bit more bang for your buck, if you like, on the acceleration because you get more power going down. But don't forget with that, then obviously it's gonna suck up more battery. So you're gonna get less miles you know, to your kilometer um, or to your, or to your kilowatt should I say not your kilometer more less miles to your kilowatt and speaking of that we are currently getting around three miles to every kilowatt which I'm afraid is not the best because if you are a Tesla owner or you've driven a Tesla you will know that the average is around four to four and a half miles per uh, kilowatt so this is quite a way down unfortunately but at the end of the day it's still around three and in petrol terms that's around 120 miles to the gallon so i'm not complaining about the actual economy on this car it's comfortable it's got all the bells and whistles on it as well this is the style that i'm driving today the style is the top of the range there are only two in the range as i told you at the beginning um, the style gets the extra bits and pieces like the blind spot mirrors it gets a few extra bits of tech that you've got on here as well um, but one thing you do get a stand is the cruise control the distance control all easily accessible here on the left hand side of the steering wheel. These are your driving aids as I like to call them down here um, and right at the bottom you've got a mode button that just changes the mode on your sound system. You'd either be listening to DAB, FM, 
uh, radio or you can go into your tunes uh, if you've got everything connected up through your Apple Play or your wireless Android you know everything's wireless in here as well which is really nice right hand side is your media control so you've got your volume control over there as well um, you've also got your ask VW button on there as well so if you're driving along and you want to get a sandwich or a burger or something um, you can just push that and say you know uh, VW take me to the nearest volts uh, take me to the nearest Volkswagen burger bar don't think they do those these days but you get the drift on it I love the little cluster here very informative you can change the view on that down the bottom here so it just scrolls through just by and these are all haptics I think I mentioned that when we were doing the upfront section of the car um, I do like them really nice and easy to use the one thing I don't like perhaps is the the, the screen here at night is brilliant but none of the buttons light up underneath so you kind of have to guess where the volume control is it's okay once you get used to it it's fine but I think I'd like to see some lights in there just to light it up a little bit uh, this car does get the blind spot mirrors as well which is nice very handy big mirrors but as you notice look at the peripheral vision in this car it's it's, it's just fantastic the amount of glass in here and the depth from here to the front of the windscreen is ginormous it's, <laughs> it's like you're driving a bus it's really really nice um, comfort factors there um, passenger wise loads of room in the back there I also like the fact that there isn't a transmission tunnel in the front here love the fact you can also pull down the cup holder and tuck it away when you don't want to use it or don't need it this is very handy in the center here love the armrests guys you cannot get much better than these armrests um, you actually get them if I pull this one down as well you get them both sides so you can actually sit like that on a long distance journey and have both I don't like this one down to be honest with you um, lighting panels down here on the right hand side you can uh, leave that on auto and it will select everything for you but generally parking and maneuvering this car it's, it's very, very easy. You've got the parking beepers front and rear, you've got the parking camera, I mentioned that, but you also have a, an, a parking assistant that you can, you can push the button on there and it will help you park the car, which I think is incredible. Love this big screen, it's really nice, very easy to access, very easy to use. Um, and again, just everything's near, touchy, feely, it just kind of works. And I feel when I'm driving this car, I'm driving a, a piece of history from Volkswagen. Um, but this is the modern version and it's just, you know, great. Um, you've seen the charging section, so you know all about the, the range and, and bits and pieces like that, the time it takes to charge one of these cars. Um, all in all, yeah, definitely get down to VW showroom, give one a test drive, guys, because if you're in the market for something this big and you need, you know, the extra space um, or you're just, you know, simply interested in having a go in one of these cars to feel what it's like to drive, then just head down there and crack on with it. But for the moment, all I can say is that I have thoroughly enjoyed driving the VW ID Buzz. It's, it's a cool little car, trust me. So there you have it guys, the VW Volkswagen, should I say, ID Buzz. What a car. I have thoroughly enjoyed road testing this car over the last week. It's practical, it's family friendly, and at the end of the day, it's very, very comfortable and very versatile. But why choose one of these over many of the others, sort of, you know, your BMW iX3, for example, or your Jaguar I-Pace? Why would you be choosing a VW ID Buzz? Well, straight up, it's a lot cooler than those cars, trust me. I think just the looks alone just, just stand out amazingly. But most of all, it's actually cheaper than those cars. And it's probably, at the end of the day, far more practical than any of those cars. Another thing is, because of its, the, the, what it is, it has a little bit of status about it. So that means like secondhand values on these cars are gonna go through the roof because you just can't get hold of them. There's like an 18 month waiting list to, to actually get one of these. So if you can get one secondhand, fantastic. But that pushes that residual value through the roof. And at the end of the day, that then means that the PCP rates are even lower. So if you're gonna actually lease one of these, it's gonna get lower and lower. So all round, it's a lot better bet than a lot of the competition. Let's put it that way. Um, at the end of the day, it's your choice, but I do definitely suggest you get down and give one a test drive because it's quite an amazing car to actually drive out on the road. I love all the, the high seating position on it. I love the fact it's got a, got a bit of street cred and a bit of kudos about it. I think VW have really nailed it when it comes to, you know, not copying the 1950s or 60s version of this car, but actually bringing that car up to date. 
They've absolutely nailed it. And they've nailed it too with the warranty as well. You get a three year or 100,000 mile warranty with this car. Comes with a 12 year anti-perforation. That's all your rusty bits underneath. Not that you're ever gonna get any. And at the same time, you get a three years paintwork warranty. You will get another three years roadside assistance warranty. But most importantly of all, you get an eight year or 100,000 mile battery warranty. Now, all of these warranties, I will mention, can be transferred over to a new owner. So if you do sell the car, you know, you come, you've had it two or three years, you want to pass it on to someone else who's going to enjoy this fantastic car, um, then you can transfer over all those warranties, providing you keep up your service agreements. And don't forget, when you're servicing an electric car, it's a lot easier than a combustion engine car, trust me, and a lot cheaper at the end of the day. So you get these health checks with these cars and they're kept up to date with over-the-air updates and things like that. Pretty fantastic if you ask me. End of the day, the choice is yours. Get down, give one a drive and make your own opinion on the VW ID Buzz. And I definitely think it would actually go well in the AJ the Player garage. Definitely. Love the little car. You've been watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. You've got any comments or any questions about this car, or you actually own one and you want to put in your own you know, thoughts on owning one of these cars, stick them in the comment box down below and someone will get back to you or other people can read and they can comment too. And we can create a conversation about the VW ID Buzz. Um, you can subscribe as well. I'd love you to subscribe to the channel. It'd be fantastic. Um, don't forget though, we don't just do car reviews. There are lots of other things. You saw the video at the beginning of this. Um, just make sure that you tick that little box that allows you to get update, uh, not updates, reminders or you know notifications. That's the word I was thinking of notifications to let you know we just put up another video because it might not be a car review it could be something even more interesting you know some of the other weird and strange stuff that we get to do here on the player YouTube channel I'm going to ask you one thing but in return I'm going to give you one thing back so it's like kind of like you know tit for tat so to speak um can you give us a big thumbs up? Because we don't get paid any extra we don't get a bonus but what we do get a few thumbs up means you liked the video now, if you like the video, that means the boss is happy, so are the sponsors, and that keeps me, camera crew, and the editing crew in a job at the end of the day. So I'd really appreciate the thumbs up. Thank you very much. In return for that, irrespective of whether you do it or not, you can get yourself your hands on a copy of The Player because we're not just a YouTube channel. We're far bigger than a YouTube channel. We are The Player and you can get The Player bookazine. Oh yes, there you go. You're looking at it now. It is a 220 page, well, it's a men's lifestyle bookazine. A bookazine is a magazine, so it comes out on the frequency of a magazine, but it's got a hardback cover. But unfortunately, I can't give you the actual physical magazine because they're like 100 UK pounds each. And I think the boss would go through the roof if, it, if I started saying you could have a free copy of that. You get the online version of it, which is completely free of charge for you. And at the end of the day, it is exactly the same as the book. There's no difference, except you can access it online. And all you've got to do, head over to www.theplayer.co.uk. Hang on, editor, spin it in somewhere, will you please? I think it's coming in down here somewhere now. If you head over there, don't worry, there's no forms, no credit cards, nothing like that. You just put a name in and an email. That is it. Then you can access that online. 220 pages of jet skis, boats, cars, interviews, food, golf, holidays. It's, it's, it's all in there, guys. And it's, it's all there for you for free because you watch me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. Guys, thanks for watching. I will catch you next week with something I hope equally as interesting and as street cred as the VW ID Buzz. Absolutely love it. Take it easy.